Hey guys, it's ATJ here. I'm finally back uh, with more Photoshop tutorials. So to get started, I thought I might show you how to create your own Windows 7 theme background from scratch, just using Photoshop. Um, so we'll get started with this now. Okay guys, to get started, we want to open up Photoshop. I'm using the CS4 edition of Photoshop Extended. doesn't really matter what version you're using, you can use pretty much all uh, CS editions and uh, elements, it wouldn't matter because this is using very basic uh, tools and techniques that you probably find in most photoshops. Okay, so this is just the layout structure of the image itself, just going to go quickly over it. So it's a bit of work to do, but not too much. Um, so what we're going to do now is just make a new document. Um, so whatever size you want, I'm going to use 1440 by 900, by 900 sorry. Um, for, uh, that, that's because my, that's my screen size, so do whatever you want. I'm going to have this as my desktop background, so I'm going to have it as my screen size. Um, and you also have 70, 72 dpi as well, as we're not printing this out, it's just going to be on the web and for general viewing. Okay, so we need to unlock the background layer to create a background for it. Um, so what are we going to do first? I found an easy way to unlock it. This is to hold down Alt and double click on the layer itself. So Alt and double click will unlock it to make it layer 0. Okay, so right now we need to make a gradient. Um, for the background, so I will get my custom gradient that I made for this. I will list the colors in the description as well, but I'll put them out here. So the first green color, dark green, 2F8230, and for the lighter one, yellow, triple FC84. Again, I'll put them in the description for you. Okay, so once we made that, um, we want to reverse it first and make it into a radial. Well, the stone will make it something similar to that. We we'll bump the scale as much as possible, and we want to move it kind of into the top right corner. And that we still make bigger, so we're gonna get the angle, um, and we're gonna type in just just this is one I'm normally using, like 130, 128, roughly about there, and it'll make it nice and large like that. And we can readjust it so it fits nicely in the corner. Just smart. Oops. Screw up again. 128. I'll just do rough at 28. That works for me now. Okay, so I like that. We will press OK to that. Okay, so with the gradient done, um, we're going to get the text tool out. So just over here, or we'll press T on your keyboard, we'll select the text tool. Um, I'm using Century Gothic font. It's the closest font that I found so far that uh, that resembles the 7 in the actual uh, final document that I found. So we're going to use that. Um, I'm using a fairly big size, 500 pixels, uh, because of the size of the document. And uh, so we'll, we'll pretty much cheat pick a size that matches your the, your your uh, document. So right now, 500 is mine. I'm going to click in the middle, press 7 to standard. I'll change the color to white. So right now it's white. And uh, roughly place it so that the top right corner of the 7 um, it's roughly about the middle of the, uh, the gradient, the white, the yellow gradient, sorry. Okay, so as you can see, it's a bit more skinnier than the actual final version, so what we're going to do is actually bulk it up a bit, um, putting a stroke around it just for now. Um, so we're going to go down to FX while selecting the layer, go stroke, we're going to put it up to about 10, we'll put it white, so up white, and we want to create it in the center, position center, because it's running out to rendered, so we're going to get less of the roundness coming out. Okay, so now we've done that, we need to create that bend in it, you know, so that we can uh, get the point pulled up a bit more um, into more of a point, as you can see there. Um, so we're going to first of all tilt it, because it's a tiny bit tilted in that version. It's a tiny smidge tilt. So first off, tilted, so now we need to um, create the warp in it. So first off, we need to uh, radicize this layer, so we can start um, warp transition, so type. So we're going to go radicize type by right-clicking on the text layer, radicize type. Control T again for transforming. Um, we're going to right-click, we're going to go warp. So now it's bringing up the warp thing. We need to pull the corner up, and slightly pull that up again, pull this down. I'm going to pull the bottom out a bit. So going to pull the top up a bit more. So that looks 
somewhat fine. Well, we can do it again. So this this part's one of the hardest parts because you have to get it all right. Um, it's really just trial and error. And it's a bit of mucking around, and after a while you'll get it. Just need it the right curve. It takes a while. It's the hardest part. So. Okay, so I think that should do us fine. So we we reposition it again in the center. Um, now we will zoom in, and you'll see it's a bit fuzzy and around the edges. So we want to clean that up um, by making like a, a a a path that goes around it. So um, first off, we're gonna we're gonna create a new layer and shift. I uh, can shift um, select these ones to we so we can merge them. So you can image, so layer um, merge layers, or we can just go Control E. Um, so now the the merge. So we've got rid of the strokes, and so now the strokes still on there, but it's, it's no longer a layer style. Um, and now what we're going to do is get the pen tool out, and we're going to zoom in a bit further. And we're going to go around the seven as best as we can. Uh, forming the uh, the curves, we don't need to worry about bits that we miss. It's more just getting the right curves um, in place because we want to get rid of all the jagged bits that we don't really need. So, using the pen tool, which is just P, and uh, we'll create, we'll start creating uh, these paths. So roughly, so we can follow by. So as curvy the better. We don't want to not go off the completely off the track of the. Uh, of the R7, but we want to follow it as best as we can while getting rid of all the jagged bits. This is a bit difficult here. This can take some time. This is really just to straighten up all the edges because we don't want it to look all fuzzy. Like I didn't do that in the other version, so you'll notice this version is a bit fuzzy around the edges. Um, this is going to clean it up a lot better than that, so we'll get this nice and done fast. And we don't need to worry too much about these edges because these are going to get cut off. Um, but you know, we don't want to have them too jaggedy, so we'll keep them similar. So we go through the whole thing. This is really rough. Um, you probably want to take some time actually do this properly because this will actually look all times better with it done properly. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have a rough selection of the seven. Um, so right now we're going to go into our paths while selecting the same layer. I'm going to control click the uh, the layer style to bring out the selection. We're going to inverse the selection now, so control sh uh, shift control I or control shift I, I cannot remember. Uh, it's shift control I, which will now inverse it, so it's now selecting everything else but the 7. Press delete on your keyboard. Now we'll smooth it up so it's nice and smooth like that. So as you can see, we can zoom in, it's very smooth now.